This video is brought to you by Ace of 12 Productions. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to enjoy the videos. Also, please try and comment and rate the videos. Thank you. Hello, this is Asib12 and welcome to my tutorial about HTML tables. So, um, as this says, we're just going to be go going through HTML tables. So, to start off, you want to um, get the basic setup with these HTML tags. Open the head tags, open the style tags in case we need any CSS, and put in the title, close the head tag, open the body, close the body. And then inside this body, we're just going to open the table tag. Okay, and then we can close the table tag off here. So, uh, a number of attributes can go into this table tag, such as border. So, um, you often have people setting the border to zero. Um, I'm only guessing here, but I I'm assuming that um, sometimes if you don't set the border to zero, um, some browsers may do that automatically. So, you've got to set the border to zero always remember to do that or you can set the border to one this will show every um... this will put a border around every table cell and stuff so only really use that if either you think it looks good like that or you're very good at um, making tables enough so that you don't think it looks stupid when you have um, borders like this okay so i'm just gonna start off with sorry one let's do border one Okay, and then we go on to cell spacing. So, um, in um, tables, you have what's what are called table rows and table cells, although the tag is actually TD for table dimension. But what this does is it's um, it's basically padding for the cell. So you can set set that to about five. I say don't go much higher above that, or else the tables will start to look possibly a bit silly. Okay, and then cell, um, oh sorry, cell spacing, sorry I got confused. Cell padding is the padding, so five for that. Cell spacing is the distance between two cells. So if you've got, let's, this isn't how you do it, but cell one and then cell two, each on the same row. Okay, so that, that these two cells are on row one, and what's going to happen is, Cell 1 will appear here, and then cell 2 will appear here. And what the cell spacing is, is how far, how much of, um, how many pixels there are between the two cells. So, um, I generally have that set to naught. I'll demonstrate what it looks like if you have cell spacing, but not at the moment. Okay, so, um, we're pretty much done with our table tag. We don't need to add any more attributes to it. And, um,. We just have to open this TR tag, which stands for table row, and then close the TR tag as well. Okay, then we, whoops, not capitals, we add the TD tag for the table dimension, like I told you, and then forward slash TD to close the table dimension. And then, um, notice, if you put some stuff in here, I'll just save and refresh this. Okay, it's, it's above um, the cell. Here's our s table cell. And it looks silly, so remember, you don't put it in between the table row and the table cell. You put it in between the table cell opening and the table cell closing. So if we just put that there. Okay, so now you can see it's given us this um, text and this table cell here with a border. Because we set the border to 1. If it's naught, and there's nothing around it, but a table will still be there. So, tables are very good for positioning elements, not on the page, not like positioning them from here into the center, but for um, getting a good proportion and stuff, etc. Um, anyway, we're going to move on now to, uh, let's think, um, okay, so we can do, we can set the width of this table cell, so I can say I want the width to be 500 whoops, not 5,000, and the height to be 200. If I save that now, okay, so our text is still here. It's a height of 500, no, sorry, 200 pixels, and it's by 500 by 200 pixels, okay, because we set that here. If we set the height to 1, let's say, um, it's not going to actually make it 1 pixel because we still need to fit this text in 
but it's still going to be 500 um, uh, pixels of width. So if we set that back to 5, it's not going to go to 5 because, of course, again, we've still got this text in here. So you only really use the width um, when you're trying to um, make sure that you're putting an image into the table and you want it to be the exact size, you want the table to be exactly the same size as the image. So you make the width whatever and the height whatever the image is and then it will perfectly um, enclose that image and make it look good. So I'm just going to get rid of these width and heights. Notice um, you can add style to the table tag, the table row tag and the table dimension tag. Okay, so we can have certain styles for each table row or even each table cell or we can just address the entire table. So let's just go through that now then. So in previous tutorials I've taught you about changing the font with font family is Arial. Okay, and if we close that off now. Okay, so it's changed that font there. Um, if we make a new table cell. This is in the um, same row, notice. And then we put some text in there as well. Okay, so here's our second table cell. And it's, a, it's still Arial because that's there. Now if we move this to here, this goes back to times because it's only addressing the table cell which contains this text. And it's st it, it is Arial as we told it to be here. So, um, and then you can also set it for the table row. If I just put that in there and then make a new row with some dimensions in it and then put some text in there okay so um, notice it has created another cell here because it wants it to be even so because we've got a cell here it's created a cell here as well but anyway back to the point um, remember this table row we put the style here well it it hasn't come in here because there was no styling in here in this table row it was only in this row so it goes back to the default which is times yet these have been overrided by this style attribute and they have gone to Arial so um, that's just um, a little idea of how to do that um, okay so next oh yeah I told you I'd tell you about cell spacing so if we just to make it noticeable, I'm going to put 50 pixels of cell spacing in. Okay, so here you go. We've got um, 50 pixels here, 50 pixels here, 50 pixels here, 50 pixels between this cell and this invisible cell, which was there before, but we haven't actually included. Let's just put that in there. Okay. So here we go. So 50 pixels here, 50 pixels here, and 50 pixels here. So um, that's that's what cell spacing does basically. If we set that back to five, um, it looks okay. It looks better than 50, of course, but it still looks a bit silly, I think. Even one looks one looks one looks okay actually. It does look like you've set the border bigger, which is not bad. But um, to be honest, I think you should just have no cell spacing. It's pretty pointless. Unless you have reasons to use that. Don't really use it. Um, okay, so now we're just going to go on to positioning our table. Um, before I taught you how to use the um, class tag, the class attribute, sorry. So class equals whatever. And then you could put that into this style tag. Well, now we're just going to be going through IDs. So what are IDs? What's the difference between ID and what's the difference between class? IDs are pretty much the same as classes except they can only be used once. If you ID something, it can only be used with in that one place. With classes, what you can do is you can basically you can do this if you want like text to be bold, you can have um the dot for the class and then bold and then you can say font dash weight is bold and then anything you want to be bold you can just put div class equals bold 